Henry Kaminsky here with another Brand Doctor podcast episode for you. And we have an amazing guest today um, as my journey continues to find more inspiring female entrepreneurs out there. And have them share their stories of entrepreneurship and how they've built their brands. Um, I have to tell you, I am so super excited and inspired by our next guest. I did my homework on her and she is quite the personality. She is, <laughs> she's quite the, 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 the spunky type, which I, I love. Um, without further ado, we're going to talk about how creating uplifting content and the result of creating uplifting content um, for your business and brand and what that does to your audience, what that does to your perception, what that does to your business as a whole. So, I own Butler. I what own you. What's going on? <laughs> hey, darling, I'm good. How are you? Uh, doing awesome. So, <laughs> let's get into this. Let's get into this. So how did you create the brand to begin with? Well, it, went, it was a bit of a journey, to be honest. Um, I started it uh, two years ago with a friend of mine. Um, I just, I've always felt like, I, I deal with depression a lot. It's something that I've had on and off for years. Um, and when I feel really low, it was always a struggle to find stuff to put me in a good mood. Like I just... I'm, I'm a person that like wants to control everything. And I'm like, I don't want to feel this way. I want to feel good. And I would flick through stuff on TV and I'd never find anything. And it was just difficult. So it shouldn't be this difficult to find uplifting stuff. And so um, I had started it with a friend of mine who is an influencer, has um, creates really beautiful, incredible content. And we had this idea to start a production company um, that creates sort of beautiful video and content with, with, with messages. Um, but he's super successful, really didn't have the time um, to commit to it. And so we kind of went our separate ways. Um, and in that kind of growing period and time, like I'm an actress too, I was working as an actress and doing voiceover and traveling, doing other sorts of stuff, um, kind of being the head of my one woman production company wasn't like, a, that wasn't a good idea at the time. It was just a bit too much. So then it kind of, then I really started to, to bring in that idea of, um, it, for me, I had, I had the idea of like a hub. It's a hub of uplifting content, inspirational and uplifting content. And so, uh, <laughs> it's so funny that your face looks so serious. <laughs> What's happening? Is my face over there or something? This is really cool. Oh um, my God, you're hysterical. <laughs> is that distracting you? <laughs> I mean, I'm like, do you have my face on a screen somewhere else? Is that what, it, oh, okay. Cause I can see you, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get it now. Okay, very fancy setup you've got. I'm just very simple. Um, so anyway, it then became this, um, hub of uplifting inspirational uh, content and so it's very simple the brand is very simple in that I just anything that we share or post um, the, the, the question that I ask and I have people ask on the team is does it leave you feeling uplifted does it leave the reader or the watcher or somebody who is consuming that content feeling uplifted and um, you know sometimes people have this misconception that it's about like fluffy cats and you know just like really mediocre stories about nothing and that's not true like I'm not saying that we should not talk about things that matter things that are important things that are serious um, it's it's how you talk about it so for me it's not about um, you can talk about a news story um, a war even um, but it's just you can tell it in a way that leaves people feeling inspired not just these are all a bunch of horrendous things that are happening the world sucks have a good day it's like these are horrendous things that are happening. These are remarkable people who are doing things in spite of this, who are trying to make a difference. If you want to make a difference, you can too. Here's how. Do you know what I mean? So uplifting content isn't just um, kittens and rainbows. It's, um, it's the idea that you're delivering something that leaves someone feeling inspired, empowered, motivated, um, and uplifted. I love it. I love it. And, 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 Forgive me if I go too deep on these interviews. I, I, I learned so much. Yeah. I like depth. All right, good. Yeah. You know, uh, because I learned so much from my guests. It's, it's unbelievable. I was thinking about it this morning. And I was like, you know, over just the past 10 days that 
I've been really going gung ho on the on the female entrepreneurship, and 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 understanding and learning all of their journeys individually. You know, it's amazing how things get created and transpire from personal issues. You know,、mm-hmm. like, from this, and so、uh, because of your dealing with depression and all of that,、um, do you find that the the brand has really been quite the The, the therapy for you, while you're out there helping other pe- people. Yeah,、um, it definitely has been.、Um, but then on the flip side of that, there's also the pressure.、Um, and so for me, it's like an ongoing. It's an ongoing thing. Like I'm still going through it. And I, the reason that I do it is that I want to. I know that other people out there are experiencing the same thing. And so I talk about it a lot、um, because I I know that when I talk about it, it gets other people to open up about it.、Um, but it's it's still like really difficult. Like from October to. Maybe even last month, I was just in a real bad place and like wanting to give up on everything. And I cancelled a talk that I had in London for an event because for me, I, I feel like a bit of a fraud. It's like, how do you, how are you trying to go out and uplift people when you feel like when you feel awful and don't want to get out of bed and are really struggling? And so for me, it's like it is a therapy in a way because it kind of forces me to.、Um, like move through it and grow through it and learn from it, and the way that I. Find that it, it that I'm, I'm doing it. The reason this I'm supposed to be doing what I'm doing is from these experiences. I'm then like sharing my experiences, helping other people,、um, and it does it kind of it, it when I kind of get out of that funk enough to like move forward. Then I want to go and help other people move through that and and come out on the other side because I know what I'm capable of.、Um, and when I'm in flow, when things are going well, it's just like. Ridiculous! Everything is just popping off. Things go really well. I can just like feel like I can take on the world, and when I'm not, it's just everything just stops.、Um, and so, yeah, it's just it's just I'm gonna continue sharing my journey and what's going on because I know that it, it it helps some people. I love I love your transparency. One of the things that that I look for in brands are is is true transparency. And I I see that just by consuming your content, just the little bit that I've consumed thus far. I mean, you really put it out there, and, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I really feel like you you are truly an amazing human being, and you're and you're really not afraid of what people are saying or doing or reacting、um, to your content because it's you know. I think we all get scared. We're all afraid of 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 being embarrassed. We're all afraid of failing. We're all afraid of, you know, just fill in the blank. And, you know, I, I love. I didn't know that you canceled that meeting in 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 England. And I feel the same way too. Sometimes, like imposter syndrome starts to kick in, and and next thing you know, you're like, am I even worthy of owning this business to begin with? And And and、mm. all that starts to creep in, and you say、mm. to yourself, like, how does how do how do I get out of this funk? I mean, listen, I, you're not alone. I think a lot of us all go through those funks, and we're going to continue to go through those funks. It's it's how we react to those funks when we see them creeping in is what's going to determine our future and how we're going to 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 move forward and get through it. And one of the things that my mentor, God bless his soul. You know, has taught me to do because I'm sort of that fluctuating type of guy. I'm a very extroverted. I'm, I'm very emotional. I'm very passionate. You know, and one of the things that I realized was when I was when somebody would say something bad about me, you know, I would be like, "That's it. Like, I'm canceling vacation for the family.、Mm. I'm a complete failure." That guy or that gal is absolutely right. I am useless. I am pathetic. I am. You know, and fill in the blank, right? And then, you know, my my mentor said, like, yeah, one negative comment, and it has you like in a deep depression. Like,、mm. that's not that's not Henry.、Mm. And so he he taught me. There's three questions you ask yourself when you get confronted with information like that. He said, one, you ask yourself, is it true? Is this、mm. is this fact or is this opinion?、And、the second thing he said, you want to ask yourself. Is this gonna? Is this statement? Is this energy going to build my confidence, or is it going to make me insecure? And then the third question you ask yourself in this split seconds is: 
is this information going to help me or is it going to hurt me? And he gave this, he gave this example of his kids. He's got an 11 year old boy and a 14 year old boy. And the 14 year old boy had this beautiful, beautiful like sculpture that he'd made in class. And the 11 year old boy is not as mindful and he's a little bit more clumsy, right? So he's walking into Big Brother's room with something in his, something in his hands. And he knocks the sculpture off the lantern and, or off the mantle. And the thing goes in a thousand pieces on the floor. Now, 14 year old son looks at little brother with rage in his eyes. Mm -hmm. Then he begins to immediately shed tears. And then a split second later, this overwhelming calm comes over him. And he says to little brother, it's okay. And he did what my men, he said, and it was amazing to see because he was a little version of me because that's how I handle my situation. And he says to see that, to see him do it so flawlessly was, mm. inc was incredible. And mm. I, I, I got so much out of that. I got so much out of that, that little story because how quickly do we look at things and say, Ooh, that's gospel. That must be gospel because they said it. Mm, mm. And it's really not. Oh, yeah. Right? So where do we go from here, Ione? Where do we go from here? Like, <laughs> what were some of the... So my, my next question is, as you're building this brand, and it's growing rapidly. I mean, I, I see the... The, I see you on Instagram and I see you on Facebook and, and it looks like you have a very engaged community. My first question is, what were some of the trials and tribulations you went through as you're building this brand? And then I got a follow-up question after that. Yeah, and again, they're, they're definitely ongoing things. Um, so it was just sort of, in the beginning, it was just sort of working to understand what, what goes well, um, finding the right type of content, um, knowing what elements of it make something go viral, because that was the way that the page grew originally, viral video. So um, can you talk about that for a second? What were some of the specific pieces of content that made certain videos go viral. What do you think the elements were, in your opinion? I think it comes down to something that really has, um, something that really kind of has an emotional um, like quality to it, something that really connects with people on an emotional level. Like there's just a lot of crap online um, that doesn't really, that doesn't really connect. It's just kind of just sort of everything, everything is out there. And so when you, when there's something that that makes people feel or think or you know th th where they're like yes that i agree that's right something that's deeper i feel but then you can't go too deep <laughs> there were certain things you know we'd ask questions or you know do memes and then it, it gets too deep and then it just like brushes over people's um head a little bit because they don't want to have to think about it because they're on facebook so it's it's just a fine balance of you know just I think core truth telling about things that really matter and import and are important to people in an easy to understand way. Keep it simple, stupid. Like the like there's just you know if you can say it in a minute, don't make your video five minutes. Um, and so yeah, it's just I think I think that would be the key. Um, and then trials and tribulations now continue with Facebook algorithm changes. Um, and um, so just, you know, still dealing with that. And I'm, I'm contemplating, it's, it's harder to reach people in the page now. And I'm, I probably should just do Facebook ads. Um, but I was always hesitant to do that because then you don't really know, you don't know what content is working if you're paying for it. Um, right. So I was hesitant to do it, but now organic reach is so non-existent um, that May, I'm probably going to have to start going into that. So I'm, I'm kind of dealing with, with, with those types of things too. And then my own personal dealings with, it's like, um, you know, selling to people, selling to people and with per, like with personal development, with spirituality, I kind of have a resistance to kind of selling to people, to the community. Um, but I got to make some money. So I'm kind of working through my own beliefs about that and, and money and, 
taking money from the community and like what am I offering in return like I just keep I'm like my belief is that you keep giving it and things come um, but because of everything it's changing I'm kind of having to, to get more smart about the the strategy and the business model and what I'm doing and mm. so now it's moving into more um, I'm working on a book and stepping more into speaking and stuff like that mm. um, so yeah it's and that's the thing when it's this kind of digital world it's ever evolving constantly changing um you know we we have we went from you know facebook lives that were getting twenty thousand views to like a fraction of that and so i take it personally as like something's gone wrong and it's not algorithms have changed people aren't seeing the videos anymore um so it's kind of just reminding myself that um just keep keep going with what works keep going with what resonates with people keep you know getting feedback from people um and then just trying to navigate all these algorithm changes and things that are coming up well that was my next question it's funny i just want to respond to some of the facebook comments that we're getting you know david milton says your offering is you in capital in capital you and he said your yeah. accent probably is a huge positive if your audience is primarily in the u.s um olio says um, hi olio yeah olio says um you light the small candle to remove the dark sometimes we do sometimes what we do are stepping stones to greater things to come i i i wholeheartedly believe that i mean that uh, i'm not going to get into it this is your show not mine today but there's a lot of things that happened in the past that got me to where I am today. And thank God that those things happened. I mm. will say that. Um, I always look at things as, as an opportunity and a blessing versus something that is taken away from me. Um, so I look at that. And so my next question was, it was so funny. You mentioned about the offering, right? And, and it just triggered something in my head a little bit. Like uh, I suff I struggled tremendously with selling myself for years. I said, I called myself the worst seller on the planet. I can't sell. I can't close. I'm awful. I'm a great designer, you know, but forget it. When I get on the phone, I choke and it's all that. So I told myself that for years until I finally got a sales coach because I said, if I can't sell myself out of a paper bag, then I, I truly don't deserve this business. And it wasn't until my sales coach said that, Henry, you're not selling anything. Let's just, let's, let's call a spade a spade real quick. He said, you're helping these people. And he said, when you get on the phone with them and you think that you're selling them, then of course you're going to get that feeling inside of you. But you, you offer a tremendous service to entrepreneurs and they need to, they need you. And you're helping them and only those that accept your help will progress and will get to where they want to be faster, easier, quicker, smarter, whatever, you know, fill it in. He said, but what I just want you to take away from today is you are helping these people. You're not selling them anything. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to share that with you because I, I don't know, something told me that I needed to share that with you today. But I think that you have a tremendous service uh, and uh, or a tremendous message, I should say. In your media kit, it says here, you know, you're changing the world by putting more focus on the positive and you're, you're encouraging people to be of service. And I feel like that is a very, very powerful message and more people need to hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll carry on with that. Well, you're doing a hell of a job with being entertaining and being uplifting and sharing your story, you know, online on a digital platform and on social media. I know a lot of people are mortified of camera. They're mortified of sharing their story. They're mortified of sharing their message. And I give you a lot of props for getting out there and, and being, being brave and, and putting yourself out there and coming to a country by yourself, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're, 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 you're alone, but like, like coming here and being like, I'm going to dominate this country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do, I'm taking over LA. Uh, and, and yeah. Cause I don't know if I would go to another country and just start. 
I reckon I recommend it to everyone to go to a new country. Um, I mean, I, it wasn't a, as big a deal for me. Like I've traveled to the States since I was really young. My mom was a travel agent, so I've always traveled a lot. So it wasn't as if it was, you know, a, a big step really. Um, and it's an English speaking country. Do you know what I mean? It's right. not like I moved somewhere else where I had to learn a new language and didn't know anybody. But what it did do was force me out of my comfort zone. Um, like I traveled a lot. I always saw myself as quite independent, but I'd only ever lived in London. And um, I just thought, well, that doesn't sound like someone that's very independent and worldly. Like you need to live in another country at least once. And so, yeah, it was one of the best decisions I made because it just forced me into just doing, you know, making those connections with people, trying to find a way to survive and make a living and get my green card and do all these different things. You know, it forces you out of, to a whole nother level of yourself. Right. And I think we get, it's very easy to get complacent um, just you know doing the same thing and, and staying at home and so i yeah strongly recommend that for everyone just give yourself that challenge of going and living somewhere else for a year or so worst case scenario you come home um right. let's yeah. talk about this for a second staying in your comfort zone and yeah. staying in your comfort zone and the the cost associated with staying in your comfort zone you know people like oh you know what let me just stay here it's safe you know, I don't, I don't have to risk anything, you know, God forbid something happens, I'm going to be okay. Like, but then yeah. what is the cost associated with staying in your comfort zone, in your opinion, through your eyes? Well, I mean, it, it kills your dreams and it, um, it also, it just kind of keeps you where you are. Um, I think you can't grow. You, you can't grow when you're in your comfort zone. Um, for me, I was in my little Facebook comfort zone. You know, the page was growing and things were going really well. I'm like, yep, just doing the same thing and we're carrying on doing the same thing. And then um, the algorithm changed and everything changed. Um, and I was really upset by it. But in fact, that change has set me off on a whole new path because it made me realize that, I mean, and I never wanted it to be about, um, you know, just a social media page because that I just thought, that's just not smart having all your eggs in one basket yep. but inevitably that's what I had mm -hmm. um, and since that change and through speaking to a friend of mine who's like my cheerleader slash mentor he's just phenomenal and shows me things about my reminds me of things about myself that sometimes I forget um, just reminded me of like you know you've, you've built this huge following you've got this amazing community you're helping people on a daily basis you know you're doing all this stuff like why don't you have a book? Why aren't you speaking? Like there's all these people with huge careers. Um, you've got a bigger following, like twice the size as a lot of them. Like, why aren't you doing that? Um, and I was like, that's a good question. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been in my comfort zone. So um, yeah, I think we, we need to, we need to keep pushing ourselves and it's uncomfortable because it's, you know, the unknown and it's, it's challenging, um, but you have to. Um, so yeah, the, the, the impact of staying in your comfort zone is you just don't grow don't realize your potential, I think. Uh, you know, I, I'm a big fan of Gary Vee. I can take him in doses because when you watch that individual for so long, you start to get really amped up and your blood pressure goes through the roof. Um, but one of the things he's, one of the things that really resonated with me is when he was talking about regret. And that's one of the things that really resonated with me um, as an as a entrepreneur and getting out there every single day, waking up and doing what, it is that that day guides me to do. And, you know, when I was growing up, uh, you know, my parents, my parents had a very difficult time having children and they only were able to have one, which was me. It took them 16 years to figure wow. out how to, uh, how to conceive a child. I mean, the, just one operation after the other, nothing worked, nothing worked. Finally, it was the day of the Immaculate Conception and boom. Uh, little Henry was was conceived on that day, ironically, and it was funny. About two years after I was born, I my wife my my wife my mom comes into my room and I'm in the crib and I'm blue in the face, non-responsive, and mm. so they rushed me to the hospital. And I, my mom told me the whole story. When I'm not going to go into details here, but I almost died, you know, at the age of two. And I always listen to that story. 16 years to have me. After when I was two, I get, I get deathly ill, you know? And hearing that story over and over and over again as a child, it makes you think like, man, you're here for a reason, dude. You mm -hmm. know? And mm -hmm. you're here for 
you know, uh, to make a difference. And, you know, it's funny. I, I wear this, I wear this band, you know, on, and I haven't taken it off, taken it off for three years now. And it says, remember why you started. And every time I have this weird, you know, funk and I, you know, I start looking at things all negatively, I just look down at that band and I ask myself or tell myself, remember why you started. And it all comes down to that, that story. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we need to do is look at all the positive in life and ask ourselves, what, what, you know, like, why are we here? Right. And what are we doing to make this world a better place? I, Olio said, um, what I own does makes the world a better place. And there's no amount of money for that. Oh, bless you. Thank you, Olio. He's such a ledge. That's a, yeah, that's, that's a beautiful statement. And I think, mm. I think that just goes to show the kind of impact that you're making on people's lives. Yeah, and it was easy. I mean, you know, I'd, I'd forgotten that because um, everything's online. So, you know, you, you, don't, you don't always see it. Um, and so, yeah, just kind of getting feedback was reminding me of Matt, that. And, and that's kind of what, that's what I'm all about with uplifting content because we everybody has this inherent gift. Everyone is, is here to do something remarkable or whatever. It's in all of us. And yet because of the way that we live, because of the type of world we live in where it's about money and fame and, and things over kind of core values like creativity and giving and serving um it's easy to get kind of consumed in this whole in this kind of this this world that we live in and so i kind of want to keep reminding people of that like there are these gifts that when you are reminded of that um when you focus on that bringing those out and, and and kind of doing that and living that it's kind of what I, I want. And the thing, and I, the struggle is real. Like I'm doing all this stuff and yet I lose myself sometimes. I get caught up in the noise and the distractions and the struggle of, of everything that's going on. Um, and so that's kind of the idea of uplifting content is just to keep providing that content to remind you of all these things so that you can be reminded of your value, your worth, your power, um, and, and go out and make a difference. Um, but it, I think it's just, it's an ongoing thing for all of us. We all need to keep, um, coming back coming back around yeah, and coming back stronger yeah 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 you know just knowing what it is that like you know i had my cousins over uh last night they slept over we had a little little slumber party and mm -hmm. uh we one of my cousin cousins is going through some stuff right now whatever not to get into detail but you know my question to her was what did you learn from this situation mm. what what's the takeaway what'd you learn and I gave my, I, I used an example. I mean, there was, there was a few months back where my process, you know, for my business, it, it, there were some, there were some leaks. There was some, some, some shaky ground there. Right. And, um, there was a bottleneck and, uh, you know, my clients would be just ecstatic until we got to that point and they started to get frustrated. And I said, if I don't fix this process issue, it's, Client after client, they're just gonna get pissed at this one spot. So like, and eventually it, it, I had a really nasty client that just went at me mm. and went at me publicly. And I said, so what did you learn from this, Henry? Mm, mm -hmm. right? and, and I said, I need to tighten up this process. I need to fix this or else it's just gonna happen over and over and over again. And so, and that's what I did. And now it's just one happy customer after the next. And we all go through life that way. If we continue to make the same mistakes over and over and over, or stay in our comfort zone because we're afraid to make those mistakes, where are we going? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I, I love that you bring this up. So I'm very conscious of time and I know you got a busy day. So I'm gonna start to turn the corner on this episode. But one of the things I wanted to ask you was this. <sighs> Say tomorrow was not guaranteed and it's not. If you had to give a message today, knowing that tomorrow might not come, to the people that are watching this and listening to this right now, what would be that one message? Oh, that's deep. I like it. Um, it would be, the world needs you desperately. 
to uh, step up and step into your potential and um, stop thinking small, get, get conscious of those negative, well not even negative, just those beliefs and those thought patterns that are holding you back because everything that's stopping you being where you want to be comes down to the thoughts and the beliefs that you have about yourself now. So I would say, um, yeah, the world needs you. People need you. We need you. Step up. Stop it. <laughs> I love it. And then, yeah, live your life out loud, really. Um, yeah, it's too short to not be loving it and feeling joy um, and having an amazing experience. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You are a beautiful soul, my friend. So <laughs> Thanks, let me let me ask you this: uh, 2018, right? We're almost halfway through it. My God, I know it's so strange. I traveled most of last year, and it went so much slower. Like if, I, if there's I, there's something that I read that if you do the same thing over and over again, like if you drive to work every day and if you work in an office, there's nothing that distinguishes the days for as separate days. So a whole year doing the same thing is just is just one day. Mm. Whereas if you drive to work one day and there's like a horrific car crash, um, you're going to remember that day you drove to work because there's something very different happened. So last year I traveled so much. I'd been to like four countries by this point and like I'd done a bunch of stuff. Um, and then, and I, and now I'm like, where's it gone this year? <laughs> because I've been in LA kind of doing the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's nuts. Anyway, sorry. It is too <laughs> <early>. <laughs> anyway, so, so, so what's going on? What's going on with the brand, your business this year? What do you have on the horizon? Um, if there's some sneak peeks that you can share with the audience, my audience, your audience, on what they could expect from you and the business and the brand in the next few weeks, in the next few months, um, wh what's it look like for you? So um, I am working on a book proposal to get to my agent to uh, get an uplifting content book series going. Um, so I'm really excited about that. It'll be a chance for me to go out and connect and interview people and just meet some awesome people. Um, also seeing if we can get that idea turned into a TV series, so an uplifting content TV series, which I'd like because you know, I'm an actor, I like hosting, I'm an on-camera person. Um, and then um, I'm stepping into speaking. You know, I, I realized that I like talking to people and helping people and having that connection. Um, I want to do more of that. It felt really good. I, I finally got over my insecurity in February and did a speaking engagement in March. And that just went really well. So doing more of that. Uh, I want to do uh, an uplifting foundation in which it's bringing people from the community together to, to support their causes and, and like do stuff and getting funding, using the platform to leverage funding to distribute to, to, every, to different people's causes. And um, what was the other thing? Oh, there was one more thing and it's just like totally disappeared from my brain. <laughs> oh, travel. Um, partnering with a travel agency, this amazing um, company called Live For Work, Live Before Life Before Work travel agency. And um, yeah, they wanna kind of branch into more travel with purpose rather than just like, you know, going out and getting drunk, which is fun, um, just travel, more conscious travel. And so we're partnering, um, I'm gonna go and do one of their events on a, 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 for Yacht Week in Croatia later on in the year. And then we're gonna um, kind of make like packages for uplifting content. Cause again, it's like the people need to be uplifted. People want community. Um, and people want to make a difference and give back and help. And so it's, I want to start bringing the community together off the internet, uh, in person and ha help people kind of go out and actually take action and, and do stuff. So yeah, those are the plans. I can totally see you doing live events, totally doing retreats. That's yeah. like, that's like so right up your alley. I could, and I, yeah. and, I, and I know you for like an hour and I know that you would crush it at that. Um, <laughs> Let me ask you a quick question before we wrap up. How'd you get over your fear of speaking? Um, so I have a really amazing friend um, called Adam, who basically just reminded me of, you know, I only you doing all these things anyway. Um, I was, I started doing my Facebook lives again and just, you know, the response that I get from people is really beautiful. Um, I think that I'd had this idea that, I had this idea that I needed to sound very, 
very knowledgeable and very factual so that people, you know, so my points were validated. And so I was really struggling with what to say. Um, and then I was just getting on the lives and just riffing and talking to people from the heart, which is what I'm good at and what I like doing. And then I was like, you don't need to, you don't need to bombard them with facts. Like you're not writing a, a paper here. You're speaking. I was like, I know what, I know what I'm doing. I know why I've started this. I know the impact that it's having. I know how this is helping me from my experience and what I'm doing. Like these are all things that I know. So rather than try to be this, you know, serious speaker who's like world renowned, it's like just speak from the heart with about the things that you know. And um, it, it really resonated. And, and every time I've done that, been authentic and honest and real and just open, it's always resonated really well with people. And I just felt so good after the talk. Like I felt I wasn't, I was slightly nervous, but not really. Cause I was like, just speak to people how you like to speak to people yeah. um, and just got some great feedback. And there were people that were kind of coming in like who didn't know that I was speaking and but just heard me. And one woman was just such a sweetheart. She was like, you know, I just heard you speaking out there and everything that you were saying completely resonates with how I feel right now. And like, it's just brilliant. I'm so glad I found uplifting content. And so that was fantastic. And um, yeah, I was just reminding myself of, of what's important and just to, just to speak the truth. And I yeah. love it. And, and, and I think that's, if, if, if all of us just thought that way more often yeah, and, and just understand that that's, that's what people want. One of my buddies, Sean Whalen, he's got a massive following on Facebook. Uh, and he, I interviewed him a few months back and he said, people just want the truth. At the end of the day, that's all they want is the truth. And so just give it to them. And that's right. And, and, and talk about keeping it simple. Yeah. And, and I just, I, I live by that. And then the other thing is, is I, I was at an event last year in the city. It was at Madison Square Garden. And I bumped into one of my Instagram followers. And it was so funny because I walked, he walked by me and he looked at me and he goes, you're, you're, you're the brand doctor. And I started dying. I was like, wow, this, this brand is really catching on, I guess. And, and, he, and, he, and he was just like, yeah, I follow your stuff. I've been following you a long time. And he's like in the personal development space too. And so he's, he was, I, was, I had the shittiest day the day before. You don't even want to know. It was, it was the worst. It was one of the worst days of last year. And so I, got, I went to this event thinking like, all right, I'm here. I'm present. Some a lot of great speakers. Let me just stay dialed in and focus and just forget about yesterday. It was yesterday, right? So, and then he comes into my life, right? And we had lunch and he was just like, there's, there's, there's a thousand people in the room. And I bump into this guy that follows me on Instagram. Talk about like coincidence. And again, yeah. we we're talking about this offline. I don't think there's any coincidence through this. But I said to, I told him, I didn't get into detail, but I said, you know, when we get into these funks, you know, how do you get yourself out? And he said, always tell yourself no matter what that you're that you're always enough mm. that you're always enough and i could cry just thinking about it because i needed to hear that that day so mm. bad mm -hmm. and it's funny like i've been hearing it over and over again lately and for whatever reason it just keeps showing up and I don't know. Maybe it's because I I'm not, now you see me getting all emotional here, but I love it. But maybe it's because, you know, my wife and I, we tried for two years to have a kid and mm. we had to go the IVF route. And, uh, you know, we have a beautiful seven month old and he's just the light of our lives. Mm. And I just think that like, I keep hearing that over and over and over again is because I want him to think that. Mm. Right. Mm. And so, you know, for for whatever it's worth, guys, and this is not the first time that I get choked up. I'm quite the, uh, I'm quite the emotional bag sometimes. It's but good thing. at the end of the day, for those that are watching and listening to everything I own says, it's so true. Just just show up, and step up. There's people that need you. There's people that want you. There's people that just want to be in your presence because you're you. Mm hmm. And well, so never forget that. And you're looking at and listening to a beautiful soul right here that I had the honor to interview today. And she is the result of creating uplifting content. Mm. And so I want all of you guys to go check out her brand, 
It's absolutely amazing. And it's very easy to remember. It's called uplifting content. <laughs> because the world needs more of it. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So for those that um, drop some links, drop some uh, social media handles, just to make it easier for our listeners and viewers, how can we get more of Ion Butler and more of your content? Yeah, so uplifting content on Facebook, um, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, what do you want? We got it. Um, and then Ione Butler, I O N E Butler is all of my personal stuff. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, ionebutler.com, upliftingcontent.com, upliftingclothing.com. We've got an uplifting clothing line. Just, yeah, uplifting content, and then you'll find everything from there, I'm sure. I love it. I love it. I love it. I own. Thank you so much for spending your, your, your morning with us. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. And just sharing your, your journey, your story, the beautiful background that you have and the inspiring, you know, uh, future. And, um, I wish you nothing but the best of luck. And I can promise you that this isn't the last time we're going to be chatting. Um, and for those of you guys that are listening to this episode and watching it, you know, go check out this content. I was very, very impressed when I did my research on this individual and she just has, she has quite the presence. And if you're looking for uplifting content in your life, if you're looking to make a difference, if you want to make an impact in other people's lives, then dial into this message because it's very, very powerful and um, it's going to help you live a better life. And that's the whole reason why I owns on this, on this uh, episode today and on this on this podcast today so um real quick guys uh for those of you that haven't subscribed to this podcast yet i invite you to do that and share it and i thank you in advance for that um and i hope you got some value out of today's message and you know for me it's step up it's there's enough negativity out there People want more positive. They want to be enough. And so just do that and speak the truth and share your story and just make the world a better place. One little exercise at a time. So there you have it, guys. Have an awesome day and I will catch you on the next episode. Bye. You gotta find the mouse. Ooh. Mm -hmm.